What's going on traders and investors, Alex here and in today's video, we'll be going over my setting in the new TWS chart because they did have a massive update recently and I actually started to use them and quite like them because they do remind me of TradingView. So before getting the video, a quick reminder that all the tools I personally use to trade and invest will be linked down in the description. That includes broker, scanner, charts and newsfeed. So without further ado, let's get in the video. All right, so we're going to go over this chart and talk about all the settings and how to customize them. If you haven't opened one already, the way to do this is just go to new and then you're going to go to chart and then you can go to advanced chart. And if you don't see the new chart coming out right away, what you're going to see is a big window on top that's going to ask you if you want to open the new chart. But because I'm already using them, they started to stop sending that message because I actually have them open. So uh, we can see over here, I do have a bunch of indicator on this chart and I have a, some settings that are probably different than the one that you have. So we'll break down really everything that is important to use them for either investing, swing trading, or even scalping, day trading. You're going to have all the settings that you actually need. So over here, you're going to go first to uh, the indicator. If you want to add some indicator, if you want to add like a trend line or anything, it's going to be on this side. Where I like to start is actually customizing the look because you're going to be staring at this chart for quite a while and you want to make sure they're really set up the way you want. So you're going to go right click on your chart. You're going to go to settings and it's going to bring you this window that you're going to be able to go over everything that you see. So first of all, um, let's unclick and click some stuff. So this is pretty important if you want the body to be full and colored the borders, if you would like to change just the border of the candle. Some people like to maybe make it like white. So I'll add a green color. I'll save it before changing anything. But if you want to put it this way, so you have an outline on your chart, this is how you would do it. I personally don't like to do this. And I like the wake to be the same color. If you want to change it, uh, the way you would do that is just change the color here. And you can see that these wake now are a different color. But if you want to keep it as simple as possible, leave them the color that they are because the color is actually really nice. And I'm someone that's picky with that stuff. And I get annoyed pretty quickly when platforms um, don't let me or don't have a good layout in terms of visual. Uh, just because sometimes with the reflection of window or light, you can't see and it's just quite annoying. So uh, something that you can do um, this, we're going to leave it uh, on click on click also. But if you want to click these, what they are is you can see this $8. There's a line over here. I personally don't like to do this because I already see on the sideline that the price is over here. And this is for the high and the low of a range that you're looking at. I never found this useful because if you're looking at a different range, it's going to give you a different level. So it's always moving around and I just don't feel like it's useful. So I definitely unclick this. Sorry for the interruption, but if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 20K this year. This year has been a big year. We passed 10K, but 20K is the new goal. So if you want to support the channel, don't forget to do that. Let's get back to the video. Next over here, what we have is we have the title bar, which is going to be right here. We have open, high, low, close if you want to see it bar change value and also volume if you want to see it on top. I personally don't like to have it there because if you're using an intraday chart, we're going to go to the intraday. You can see over here that it has the value of whatever you're on top of it, but also just in general, it's going to have the last value. So you can see this one is going to say open 803, high 803 and low 803. So it's just going to show like the last candle, which is not really useful compared to your open high low close on a daily chart. So if you have a daily chart, I would recommend that you leave it. If you're looking at an intraday, I would recommend that you remove it. So we're going to go back to settings. And then after that, um, this one was this one over here. So because this one is a daily chart, we're going to leave it. But otherwise, I remove them and we're going to leave it with the volume. That's totally fine. So the rest, normally I don't need to see it because I have the watermark on my chart. So I know what I'm looking at. So I can remove at least the title to clear the space on, on top over here. Background, um, I leave it like this. This doesn't change anything. And after that, you're going to have scale. And this one over here, you can also put the symbol name over here if you want. I personally like to remove it and I just have symbol last price. 
this one is going to be important because it's your last price over here and this i don't change high low price um i don't really want to see it because it's the same thing as we saw before it's going to tell you the the top and the bottom of a range like a, a bigger picture range but it's going to move or it's always going to be different if you're not using the same time frame over and over again so i just like to move it to have it like a better chart and a cleaner one and also this is quite important it's no overlapping label so if you have an horizontal line at 748 and then you have um maybe something else at like 742 it's going to show you both otherwise um if it overlaps you're not going to see both it's you're only going to see one which is not ideal so you can remove them and now count uh, countdown to bar close this is really if you want to see on the intraday mainly like how many minutes is there left to a candlestick i personally don't do that um, i never did use them but i know a lot of people are going to look at how much time is there left um, for the end of the candle which could be useful for some people i just never got used to it and i prefer to just keep it off so we're going to go back to the daily uh, when it comes to these setting the plus button i just don't want to see it sometime it's going to be on plus uh, something here at the bottom and scale mode a and l always invisible um, this i just don't want to see it it was some like you can see over here log, like auto fit or logarithmic i never need to see that so always invisible so it's cleaner there's also less data to calculate on your chart scale placement this has always been uh, auto i never had any issue with that and also the date the format is going to be there so let's jump into the section that's going to be more popular and this one is going to be for the background and the colors so as you can see these looks pretty good and I, I don't like to have the gradient some people like it i like to go really solid it's just much better and i like to have the grid line a pretty light so right now i think they're set almost to simple like the the standard size before you change anything as i mentioned just save the previous color that you have so you don't get confused so now you have your candlestick uh, you also have your grid line so everything is set up and i like to add the pan separator this is going to be white so this what you see is going to be at the bottom the pan there you see it's a different section if it's not like this on your chart i'll show you how to set it up just in a little bit so crosshair this is what you see there maybe this one actually it's it's a better if it's just a bit lighter like this over here i don't need to see it that dark and the watermark if it's not on click you should probably click it because otherwise it's hard to know which chart you're looking at it's just so much better when you can actually see the watermark which is going to be right here and something that's a little odd you probably realize by now is that you don't see the buttons um, they're quite the same color Maybe it's my screen or anything like that, but it's not ideal. But what I did have, um, it took me a bit of time to really see that there was something there to click and unclick. When it comes to scale, uh, this is gonna be the white line that you see over here. I have it set at 14, but this is really gonna be personal depending on your screen resolution and what you're looking at. But I do like to have it white and the line I have it also white, but just a bit less um, drastic in terms of color. So not that white, just to have like a good separation of where the border of this chart is and also the text. So everything is better on the visual side. So the next thing is navigation on mouse, visible on mouse, navigation. You can say always invisible. This is not going to change anything. And pan, always uh, visible or invisible. It's not going to change anything. These little things. So you can leave it like that. And you have top 10%, bottom 8% and right 10%. So normally the top and the bottom are the same and right, I, ha I like to have it probably at a six uh, like that. So just a bit more close to the border so I can see uh, more easily, you know, where these levels are on my chart. You're going to see a bigger difference when you're looking at the intraday chart. It's just a little bit closer to the border. And I have to, ha I like to have a decent amount of space on top because if I have a, a level that I'm looking at, I want to be able to see it same thing over here at the bottom so now we're going to be jumping back in the final settings of this chart before going into the indicator which is going to be an important part because i do have some setting that really help me have more indicator but not be there on every single time frame that i'm currently using so we can see over here in the last section 
in the Canva. Uh, this is pretty much there. And over here, you're gonna see apply default, but you don't wanna click apply default yet. What I would suggest you to do is just the save button over here and save uh, as a name or something like that. And it's gonna remember at least your chart and what they're set up for. So you can put day trading, for example. All right, so this is gonna be saved. And now um, before going into the indicator, as I mentioned, if you wanna see the intraday, you're gonna have to click on this over here. So for example, there we're gonna go into a 30 minute chart. You can see there is no intraday. If you wanna see it, it's gonna be over here. And now you have the intraday session. You can see it better with the volume over here that sometimes there's no volume, sometimes there's a lot of volume. It's not perfect yet because I would really like to have at least the color for the pre-market and the post-market, but it's still much, much better than what they had before. And after using them for a while, you do get used for the pre-market and the after hour just because it's trading so thin in the pre-market and also there's no volume. And normally the big uh, volume bar is gonna be at the start of the day, as we can see over here. There was no volume and you can see your first candle in terms of volume. So just a little something to get used to, but if you wanna see the pre-market data, it's with this button over here. So now let's jump into the indicator. So to add an indicator, quite simple, you choose the one you want. So I have a lot of moving average on this chart. Um, I'll use a simple one, just like a moving average again. And you can see when I'm looking at the daily chart, I have a bunch of indicator, but when I'm looking at the intraday, if we remove the last one that I did have, I'm not gonna see that many intraday. I only have one trend line or one, sorry, moving average. So the way to do this is you go to your daily chart or as soon as you open all your indicator and you're gonna go on them, you're gonna go into your settings and now you're gonna see visibility. So if you don't wanna see it on the intraday or anything like that, you remove this. For example, I have it with the 200 EMA. So over here, you can see if I go in visibility, all of these are definitely checked out. I only want to see it on the day, the week, or the month. So you select the time frame that you do want to see and also the one that you don't want to see. And then it's going to be like that. And when you go to your intraday, here you go. It's not going to be visible. So you're going to have less and less. Something I could definitely do different is just change um, a bit VWAP because it's almost the same color as these um, candlesticks. So if I put like a purple, it's gonna be a bit cleaner uh, to see versus the red on red. As you can see now, you know, you go back to your intraday and everything is good. So something that's important, if you don't see um, your volume in a separate pan, you can do over here, move to existing pan above. So sometime it's gonna come in this specific way over here. If you want your volume to be in a separate pan, you say new pan below, and now it's gonna be in a separate section, which is really, really useful. And it's not gonna cluster all your chart, and now your scale is always gonna be uh, better and have more space on top and also at the bottom. So this is much, much better. And when everything is done, pretty much just save and everything is gonna be there. You can also save your indicator section over here. So save indicator template, so you can have a name. So let's put EMA daily, for example. You're gonna do save. And next thing you know, if ever you lose them for any reason, you know, you, um, let's close some, some of them. And you wanna reopen them again, you can click back on EMA daily and everything is gonna be loaded up. So if you wanna have multiple of these charts after you open them and you wanna sync them, it's gonna be right over here. You just need to group them. And just like that, you're gonna be good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a quick tutorial about the new chart, but I really do enjoy them because they're almost exactly the same as a trading view one without just having the colored pre-market and post-market. But when this comes out, I think it's gonna be a big problem for trading view because all of the TWS user won't have any reason to use them. So thanks again, peace.